Okay, good evening everyone. Thanks for coming out this evening. Um, we appreciate you joining us. This webcast is being recorded and will be available um, on our website, texasrebuilds.org. We have completed our draft application on behalf of the state of Texas for the HUD National Disaster Resiliency Competition. The application and its attachments are available on the website and any questions you may have can be submitted in writing to texasndrc at glo.texas.gov and we will flash all of that contact information up at the end of the slide presentation. And any questions you have, we will post the answers on the web so that everyone can see the responses. Our intention this evening is to give a brief overview of the competition itself and some of the specific activities that are laid out in our phase two application. Um, presenting this evening is Ellen Kinsey, Program Development for the Disaster Recovery Program, and Alex Gamble, the Project Manager for this NDRC application. Um, as an overview for those of you who may not be familiar, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development made available $800 million for this National Disaster Resilience Competition. Any one applicant can win anywhere between $1 million and $500 million in, in community development block grant funds to support projects related to eligible disaster recovery and resilience in target areas. They have to have an unmet need from the disasters of 2011, 2012, and 2013. That includes, for the state of Texas, um, wildfires in 2011, the explosion in the city of West, as well as um, flooding that took place in several of our counties. Competition was in two phases. The um, HUD announced the program back in September of 2014, and we had to submit a phase one application um, in the spring of 2014 and compete with 67 other applicants across the nation. As a result of the phase one portion, they narrowed down the eligible applicants to roughly 40 entities and the state of Texas was fortunate enough to make it into phase two. And our applications are due October 27th. HUD will be reviewing those applications and letting the states or counties, whichever the eligible applicant is, know if they are awarded funding by the end of this year. This intention of the competition was to have the phase one be a framing and identifying of target areas to show unmet need. You had to meet, if you look at the slides, um, three main criteria to be an eligible target area. You had to be most impacted, meeting certain thresholds for certain amount of housing damage, infrastructure damage, economic impact. And then you had to um, meet certain distress factors like um, certain amount of low to moderate populate income population, certain amount of your affordable housing stock impacted, and other targets that HUD was looking for. And then you also had to show that you still had unmet recovery needs from those disasters. So all of those things had to overlay in order for a target area to be eligible. Because of that process, we started out with 158 eligible counties just from the disaster declarations, but we narrowed down the eligible target areas to three areas that were able to meet HUD's threshold factors. Those include the City of West, who are carrying out water security, land planning, resiliency projects, the County of Bastrop, which is economic revitalization through wildfire resiliency projects, 
and then the city of Austin, who was impacted by the floods, and they're doing some housing stabilization through flood hazard risk reduction. Each of these counties is taking different project approaches, building into the overall state program for resiliency to conserve, plan, assist, and develop resilient approaches to disaster recovery. And now um, Alex is going to take us through some of the specific projects in each of the areas. For the City of West, the projects to, to take place there is to look to create water security and land planning resiliency through the seven activities. The city will do this through the following. A fire station expansion, new fire hydrants, a ladder truck, renovation of their community center, and a new water tower, and a new fire station on the east side of the city. Also, they plan to expand infrastructure to support affordable housing rental development. In Bastrop County, they seek to gain economic revitalization through wildfire resilience through the following activities. A wildfire fuel management program, a multi-use community facility, building four neighborhood fire stations, rural water system improvements, a flood plain buyout program, a new evacuation route, and a public service and safety resource center. The city of Austin seeks to gain housing stabilization through flood hazard risk reduction. The city hopes to achieve this through the following five activities. A floodplain buyout, flood um, land purchase and development, land redevelopment for mixed use, um, development of an Onion Creek master plan, and risk interdependency modeling. It is through this competition that the state of Texas will be enhancing a larger program that incorporates shareable data, education, best practices, and the three localities as model projects. The state will do this through a model that looks to conserve, plan, and plan, assist, and develop. The final state program is called the Risk Redundancy and Resiliency Building Program that will consist of the three state projects. These, these are the Disaster Database Management System, the Mapping and Modeling Project, and the, a state resiliency curriculum. I will now delve a little bit farther into each of those three big projects. So the, um, the first one, the Disaster Database Management System, is going to be a partnership with the One Star Foundation. And this management system will identify vulnerable populations impacted by disaster in real time, provide information for disaster managers, policymakers, and key social support services, and will build upon the current 211 information and referral data to identify hotspots of unmet need in real time during the response and recovery phases of a disaster. We are also going to be uh, partnering with the University of Texas in a mapping and modeling project. It will provide a detailed methodology on how to best analyze data for hazard identification and apply vulnerability assets. It will develop best planning approaches to green infrastructure, capital improvement expenditures, housing needs, and economic development strategies. And finally, we worked with uh, Texas A&M AgriLife to develop a state resiliency curriculum. This, was, uh, this, develop, this curriculum will provide tools, techniques, best practices, and co-benefits to resiliently address hazards while taking into account the whole community in the development of resilient projects. Uh, this slide gives a, um, a brief outline of the scoring criteria, which is, uh, as you can see, very complex and detailed. The, uh, the, the main takeaway here is that the soundness of approach is worth 40% of our application. So we've, uh, that's why we have spent so much time putting into uh, plan and detail the two layers of projects we're going to do, both the local projects and the state-based projects. And, how they uh, interconnect with each other.
So for our uh, phase two application approach, we, um, as I mentioned, it took the approach of being locally planned, state-enabled resiliency. And our basic goal is by 2018 to implement test cases for resilient solutions at the urban, suburban, and rural scales through an enhanced state program of investments and collaborative engagement. And finally, as my partners mentioned earlier, our approach has been to conserve, plan, assist, and develop. So we're going to conserve, meaning manage and protect natural resources, plan environmentally compatible communities, assist the needs of vulnerable populations, and develop water supply improvements, among other numerous activities. We'd also like to take time to just thank our many partners in this. The communities themselves have put a lot of time and effort into holding workshops and meeting with um, residents in their community to identify key activities important to them. And we want to thank them for that. And as mentioned, um, we've had a lot of support from um, Texas A&M, both their hazard, and Reco Reduc hazard Reduction Center and AgriLife Extension and other parts of the university. The University of Texas has also been instrumental. Um, several nonprofit foundations, um, the AmeriCorps Group, Texas, Texas Conservation Corps, um, and One Star Foundation, and our other state partners like the Department of Agriculture, Department of Emergency Management and Texas Department of Homeland Security have all been instrumental in putting this application together. So we thank each of them for participating um, and we look forward to getting lots of comments and questions. So if anyone has that, um, we hope that you give us great feedback. All of that information needs to be turned in by October 19th, 2015, in order for us to incorporate that into the application. Um, and the information is on the slide for the email that you can submit any comments to. And all of the application material, including the slides we've been over, the draft application, and the attachments are available on our website, texasrebuilds.org. Or anything else? Does anyone have any questions or comments? All right. Thank you so much for taking time to join us, and we look forward to a successful phase two application.